Hello, um, it's been a while. Welcome back. Um, it is a uh, last time we had a public service announcement with uh, was a couple or I don't know when it was May April May I think it was May. So uh, welcome back. Hopefully all of you are all settled into your classrooms again this year and uh, and um, teaching uh, your classes. Maybe you have a different uh, prep this year. Maybe you have a different level uh, Spanish class, for example, that you didn't have last year. Or maybe, like me, you have the same schedule that you had last year. Um, which is really great because then I don't have to create as much as I did last year um, over um, uh, the curriculum. So um, so now I get to just kind of add things as I, as I want to. Um, I've changed a lot. I've done quite a few things differently uh, for this year. Um, you know, for those of you um, who know me, uh, I've been doing uh, CI, using comprehensible input as the basis of my instruction for my entire career. And I'm in uh, year 14 now. Um, but I'm always learning. Uh, I'm not as good as a lot of the other rock uh, a lot of rock stars out there, like Annabelle Allen and Grant and uh, Chris Stoles and Christy Placido and Tina Hargadon, for example, um, but uh, you know I do what I can, and so um, but we're always learning, right? We're always coming up with maybe some new things to do in our classroom. Um, so I did quite a few th new things this year, which I might want to I'm going to share with you. Um, but as of right now, um, so here's some uh, information. Okay, so first thing on the agenda is uh, MIWLA, the MyWilla. Um, they're calling it Connect this year. And uh, so the Michigan Conference, uh, Michigan World Language Association Fall Conference uh, in Lansing, same place, uh, October 18th and 19th. So check out the MyWilla website and uh, get all that information if you're interested in going to the conference for uh, that Thursday and Friday. And um, let's see, what else? And I still think it's 85 bucks, something like that, to register for the conference and $35 or to renew your membership. So you have to have both. Um, <clears throat> that's the bell. So, I don't have class for another 45 minutes. Um, what else? Um, so yeah, so I'll be presenting again this year, and um, I'm not quite sure on the actual, uh, I don't think they have the descriptions of all the sessions yet. They just provided the titles of all the sessions and workshops. Well, the workshops they have detailed, um, but not the sessions. And I know, um, well, mine's comprehensible input, and uh, task-based activities. So what does it mean when teachers say, I teach using CI? Um, and what's, uh, what is considered like an actual, what's a task in class um, versus something that might be just deemed as speaking practice, <clears throat> um, which is not necessarily task-based. Um, so that's basically what I'll be talking about. And I'll talk more about that later as we get closer um, to the conference, which is coming up in a couple weeks. Um, one of the workshops <clears throat> that is happening is none other than this person right there. Oh yeah, you might know her from Mitten CI Conference for the last two years. And now she is going to be at my Willa for the very first time. Yes, from Oregon, it is Tina Hargadon. Um, she is, um, so yeah, she's going to be doing a three hour workshop on either Thursday or Friday. Um, I think it's Thursday. And so basically she talks about learn strategies to engage your students in the language using their lives, ideas, and imaginations as the basis of your lessons. Learn an easily uh, replicable sequence of instruction that incorporates listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Practice every strategy as well as body and voice skills that can help you make any content comprehensible to your students. Um, so yeah, so that is what she's going to be doing. It's called uh, Filling Your Teacher Tool Belt with Strategies for Student-Centered Communication. Um, yes, and um, that's Friday, Friday's workshop. So Tina is... Can't wait to see ya. Oh yeah. Um, speaking of Tina though, um, some of you might notice that she has the CI Liftoff uh, uh, website on Facebook. <clears throat> and uh, she, always, she posts from time to time and she uh, does like live videos here and there. Um, focusing on a natural approach to the year, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and she has people ask her questions as soon as she goes on live on Facebook. 
everybody's going live on Facebook these days. Maybe I'll do one or sometime for Michigan CI language teachers. You know, I'll do a Facebook Live for a minute. I don't know. Um, but this is pre-recorded right now. And uh, so that's another thing. So um, if you haven't, I highly recommend um, A Natural Approach to the Year, uh, written by Tina Hargaden and Ben Slavic. And uh, you might have heard of it. Um, they, there's a lot of sales. A lot of people are buying this book. Um, and about how to approach the year, especially if you're somebody who hasn't really used CI as in the basis of your instruction for ever, and then you're starting to tap into that, it just walks you right through. And a lot of people are buying it. A natty, I think is the acronym, right? A natty, a natural approach to that year. Am I saying that right? I don't know, but people have been putting that on Facebook. Like saying, hey, I just bought a, a natty. Um, but things that, you know, especially with the level ones, but also the stuff translates for those who having a level two class who um, you're basically going to start using CI with. Um, or um, you, you've been using CI in your classroom and you're having, you're getting students into your level two class who haven't had much input in the language in their first year. So um, things like calendar talk, small talk, card talk. Um, you can uh, look all that stuff up online. I think if you go to a, a natural approach to the year under the resources or something, um, or let me know, you email me. I have the PDF file that Tina um, posted on CI Liftoff showing the, um, like the first five or six days of instruction or something like that. So you can preview it before you maybe commit to buying it if you want. And I think it's on Teachers Discovery and Amazon. So you just look it up, a natural approach to the year. Not a natural approach to stories. That came out a couple years ago. Um, it'd be uh, a natural approach to the year is the book. And uh, yeah, it's great, I have it. And um, I'm working with through things, especially the one with the rules where um, if you notice in Tina's videos, every time students are like not engaged in the language and they uh, are breaking the flow of Spanish or French, um, she basically just stops, immediately walks to the rules, gestures at the rule, and just sweeps the room with her eyes and smiles and waits. And um, so that is what I would have been doing. I started implementing that this year. Um, now, does it work in every sort of given uh, con uh, classroom context? I'm not sure, but it works in mine, and uh, that's basically it. Point to the rule, wait, and then continue with conversation um, or input that you're providing. And that is plan A, but then there's also plan, which is you're always your go-to throughout the whole school year. You always have to go point to the rules if somebody is breaking the flow of conversation in the target language. Um, so yeah, then there's plan B, C, and D, which you can look at later um, if you have to go to those measures. What else? So highly recommend uh, a natural approach to the year. And uh, so we talked about my Willa. Uh, the next thing is, um, uh, well, BVP is back on the radio now. So uh, it is, um, it's uh, talking L2 with BVP. I don't think a lot of people realize that he's back on now. Uh, but he's been in California, and Angelica and uh, Walter are now in New York. So nobody's in Michigan anymore. No one's at Michigan State, and um, they're coming. And then they're coming from all different areas. Um, well, California, and New York. So they're, they're doing it through probably Zoom conference or something online. And then I guess someone who's taken the calls uh, is virtual to wherever he's at at the time, like Mikey uh, Coxon. So yeah. And uh, right now, so it's on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time for all us Michiganders. And uh, if you go to the link in the description, you'll see the link and uh, there's a show today. Uh, I'm not sure what, it's, uh, what the topic is, um, but the last two episodes, the first one uh, was CLT, Communicative Language Teaching, and he talked about uh, how um, uh, people have just misrepresented what that term even means and how publishers will just slap a communicative approach on their textbooks and when you actually look in the textbook and these activities they're not um, it, it raises the question are they really communicative uh, or not so um, CLT like where 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 has CLT gone wrong as far as what people think it is Does that make sense um, the second episode was uh, the distinction between skill building and mental representation. And now uh, the 
third episode is today at six o'clock, and then you can go listen to SoundCloud and look at the bat, listen to the episodes archived. If you go to classroomtapas.com, it'll link you to uh, uh, talking to L, talking L two with PVP. So um, what else? So that takes care of that. Um, I'm trying to think what else is there to say. Oh. Um, I've been uh, starting with a free voluntary, very free voluntary reading this year, FVR, <clears throat> with my Spanish twos right now on Tuesday and Thursdays for like five minutes, um, and then every month I'm going to add one more minute of silent reading, so that'll make six minutes. And uh, I got my display of books in the back, and the students go pick a book, and they just read. And um, with the level ones, I'm going to introduce that probably in November after we have enough, uh, some more input. And, um, but then, I don't know, I think I'm going to, uh, I started with Tumba with my level ones before. Um, soon, you know, closer to the Day of the Dead. Um, but uh, I think I might, I'm not sure yet. I might start with uh, Brandon Brown Dice La Verdad or Brandon Brown Quiere Un Perro. But I think I'm gonna have to use this one because of the word count. Yeah, I'll be there in a second. Okay. Oh. So, um, Brandon Brown dice la, ver la verdad. I might do this. I'm not sure um, with the level ones to start off with. Uh, that, that's a question too. Which do you um, do class novels? And if so, which one do you start off with with your Spanish ones or your French ones, for example? Um, I guess that's about it. So, um, and then we'll t uh, next episode, I'll probably end up talking about. Uh, time rights and when do you start incorporating time rights with your level ones for proficiency and also um, how, many, how often do you do time rights and things like that whether you make it topical or you make it spontaneous so alright well sounds good and I'll see you next time bye <laughs>